Hi bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from Soul Sweetness and today I'm going to show you, show you how to make the Tower Messenger Bag. The Tower Messenger Bag features plenty of zipper pocket storage and also a top recessed zipper closure and you can make it all in one fabric or you can make your bag with a contrasting fabric for the top of the bag. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Before we begin, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern file and you always want to open the file using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. So you always want to print using actual size. You don't want to print using scaling or fit to page. It needs to be actual size. The last two pages of the PDF file are the pattern pieces. And if you'll notice on the second page of the two, there's a one inch square and a four centimeter square. You want to measure either of those squares to make sure that they measure exactly. So I'm going to take my quilting ruler and measure the one inch square. It needs to measure exact. It shouldn't be slightly smaller or slightly larger. It needs to be exactly either one inch or four centimeters. Okay, so we'll need to tape these two pages together. So I'm going to start by cutting off the top margin on the second page. If you'll notice, there's a black triangle on the first and second pages, we're going to be aligning the black triangle in order to tape the two pieces together. Okay, so after aligning the triangle, you also wanna make sure that the pattern piece artwork, the lines measure up or are aligned. Okay, so I'm gonna use my scissors to cut the pattern pieces out to the outside of the thick black line. And I just wanted to point out on the main panel pattern piece, there's a dash line up here. This dash line is for cutting out your lining fabric and your shape flex interfacing. So the lining pieces are a little bit different than the exterior pieces, just so that you don't accidentally cut all four of the, the fabrics out from the full sized piece. Okay, so you'll use the pattern pieces as well as the measurements in the cutting instructions to cut out all of your pieces from the fabric and also from the interfacing. Okay, so this is what the two pieces should look like. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the fabric to the interfacing. So I'm going to start off with one of my lining main panels and the respective piece of Shape Flex interfacing. I'm going to flip my lining fabric so that it's face down. And the side of the Shape Flex that feels bumpy to your fingertips, that's the side with the adhesive that will go against the wrong side of your fabric. So I usually recommend using a pressing cloth for this um, video. I'm not using a pressing cloth just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. You can use a bit of steam if you wish and you just want to circulate the iron over all areas of the piece for a few seconds. Just kind of keep the iron moving. Okay so when you've fully ironed each section you want to flip your fabric over and do a test with your fingernail. Try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. If you can easily peel it away, that just means you need to iron it a little bit longer. And if it seems secured, you can go ahead and move on to fusing the rest of your pieces of shape flex. Okay, so one other type of interfacing that is called for in the pattern is foam interfacing. However, I did make a note at the beginning of the pattern that if you'd like to use either fusible fleece or thermal lamp for the body of the bag, you could do that instead. The fusing instructions will be similar to what we just did with the Shape Flex, except I recommend fusing with the right side of your fabric face up instead. So I'm using foam interfacing and I'm actually using a sew-in foam. I like using By Annie Soft and Stable. And so I'm gonna go ahead and place my fabric on top of the foam interfacing. Even though it's not fusible, I'm just going to iron it just to smooth everything out. And then I'm gonna take my Wonder Clips and attach the clips around the perimeter. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters and I'm going to sew the entire outer edge of the fabric using an eighth of an inch seam allowance.
you'll repeat the same process for the second exterior main panel. Okay, so in step number three of the pattern, I am having you mark the center of your exterior main panels, lining main panels, exterior top panels, and lining zipper panels. So we're going to mark the center along the top and the bottom, and an easy way to do that with the main panel pieces is to just use the pattern piece, and you can just go ahead and draw a vertical line straight down the middle. I'm also going to mark on the right side of the fabric, but just at the top, just so that we don't have lines going all down the right side of the fabric. Again, you'll repeat this process with the four types of pieces listed in step number three of the pattern. Okay, now we're going to assemble and make the zipper pockets. So there's a, there's a zipper pocket in one of the exterior main panels and one in one of the lining main panels. So pull out one of your zipper pocket pieces. We're gonna flip to the wrong side of the fabric. When I'm making zipper pockets, I always like to draw a little T along the top edge, just so when I'm measuring and marking things, I don't get mixed up what the top edge is. I'm going to start by measuring six and a half inches down from the top edge. So you can either use a traditional quilting ruler, or if you have my zipper pocket template, that will quickly help you mark um, the wrong side of the fabric if you're using the acrylic template. Okay, so I measured and drew a horizontal line six and a half inches down from the top edge. I'm going to be drawing a second line that's half inch below the first line. And then I'm going to draw two vertical lines, one inch in from each of the side edges. Okay, now go ahead and take out one of your lining main panels, place it right side facing you. And I'm going to place the zipper pocket fabric directly on top. The fabrics are going to be right sides together, so you'll still be able to see the lines that you drew on the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm going to take my quilting ruler and measure up two inches from the bottom edge of my lining main panel. And you want the zipper pocket piece to be centered, so an easy way to do that is just to measure the top corner and just make sure you have the same measurements on either side. Okay, I'm going to place a couple of traditional pins through both layers of the fabric just to hold the layers in place till I can get it over to the sewing machine. We're going to be sewing directly on top of the lines. So in essence, we're stitching a rectangular box and I'm going to, I'm going to change back to my regular stitch length, which on my machine is two and a half millimeters. I also wanted to mention as you're approaching the corner where the two lines intersect, if as you're sewing you notice that your needle in the next step will not be coming down directly at the intersection of those two lines, I recommend decreasing your stitch length. So for example, you can decrease to either one millimeter or one and a half millimeter, take one stitch, pivot at the corner, and then turn back to your regular stitch length and that will help you get a more precise corner. It doesn't happen with every corner, but if you notice it happens with one or two, um, that's a quick and easy way to, to make that adjustment. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line halfway up the box, so it's going to be a quarter of an inch up from the bottom stitching line, and the line is going to stop a quarter of an inch away from either end. Okay, so where the line stops, I'm going to draw two outward facing V's. 
And then I'm going to use those lines that I just drew to cut through both layers of fabric. So I'm going to use my seam ripper to get an opening started. And then my scissors up the rest of the way. When you get to cutting those V's, cut as far into the corners as you can without cutting the stitches. This will make your pocket opening look nice and crisp. Okay, now I'm going to take the zipper pocket fabrics and push them out through the opening. So the fabrics should be spread apart like so. And then I'm going to use my iron to iron the opening. So first I'm going to take my fingers and kind of roll the seam out so that the fabrics are wrong sides together. When it comes to pressing the side edges, if you, your fabric is bunched up, that just means that you didn't cut far enough into the corners when you cut your V's. So if that's the case, go ahead and flip your fabrics back through, recut the V's, and then push your fabrics back and press again. Okay, now we're going to be inserting the zipper. So I recommend when inserting a zipper into a zipper pocket not to use traditional pins because I feel like when you use traditional pins, the pins make the zipper look wavy and then if, if it looks wavy with the pins, it will also look wavy when you've sewn it in place. So I highly recommend using either a washable glue stick or I like using Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. It's a quarter of an inch wide double-sided tape and it does a good job of holding the zipper in place so that you can get it sewn in and also it's water soluble so when you finish sewing it in place if you see any of the adhesive showing you can just go ahead and spritz it with some water and it will dissolve. So I'm going to be attaching the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape to the top and bottom edge of my zipper and I'm only going to be attaching it the length of my zipper pocket opening. Okay so I'm just going to push that down with my fingers and then attach the second piece to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to use the edge of my fingernail to pull back the paper and you can probably see there's the second side of the adhesive. Okay, so with the zipper right side face up, I'm going to place it underneath the pocket opening. And when pressing my lining main panel fabric down, you want to see equal amounts of the zipper tape showing on top and bottom. You don't want to pull your fabric tight up against the zipper teeth because then you'll have a hard time getting your zipper open and closed. And if you'll notice, my head is off the end of the fabric. We're going to leave it there for now. So I'm going to start sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. I'm going to sew around the rectangle. And when I reach approximately here, I'm going to stop with the needle down lift the presser foot up, pull my zipper head past my foot, and then finish the rectangle. Okay, and I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, now go ahead and flip to the wrong side of the fabric and we're going to be trimming the zipper to within about a half an inch of the stitching line.
Okay, and then go ahead and flip the top edge of the zipper pocket down so that it meets the bottom edge. We're going to be stitching the three raw edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, except we're not sewing on top of the main panel fabric at all. So when it comes to sewing that edge, just go ahead and push it out of the way. Make sure you change your stitch length back to your usual stitch length, and mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, so I wanted to mention we need to leave an opening centered along the bottom of the zipper pocket and that will help turn everything right side out later on. So I'm just going to be sewing actually one inch in from each of the side corners. Make sure to back stitch and then we'll be leaving that opening. We'll be repeating the previous steps to attach a zipper pocket into one of the exterior main panels. The steps that we just did are going to be exactly the same for the exterior. Again, we're going to be placing it two inches up from the bottom edge. The only difference is I wanted to remove a little bit of ex excess bulk. So I've got my exterior sewn to the step where I've cut the V's and cut that center line. And I'm just going to show you how I trimmed back the foam interfacing. So I'm just going to basically trim that foam back in half and again we're only cutting the foam. We're not cutting any of the fabric or anything else. And this part's optional but I just feel like it makes the opening look a little bit more crisp in the finished bag. And you can e even cut the two little V's, again, only the foam. Okay, and then again, you'll be finishing the rest of the steps for inserting that zipper pocket and finishing the zipper into your exterior. So you'll have one piece of lining with the zipper pocket and one piece of exterior with the zipper pocket. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your handbag zipper and we're going to be trimming this zipper to exactly 13 and 3 quarters of an inch. And I recommend measuring in the center of your zipper so that you can eliminate the metal zipper stops. So I've already gone and cut off the metal zipper stop from this end. And so I'm going to be measuring 13 and 3 quarters. Okay, so the cut end, the end of the zipper, I'm just going to put a wonder clip over here for now just so I don't accidentally unzip the zipper off this end. We're going to be dealing with the front end of the zipper, so basically the edge, the end where the zipper head will be when the zipper is closed. We're going to be finishing off this end of the zipper right away. So I'm going to be measuring one inch down from the cut edge and drawing a line. Actually, it would be more effective to draw on the wrong side of the zipper. And I'm going to be folding the zipper right sides together at that one inch line. I'm going to put a wonder clip over here for just a second. And we're going to be sewing a diagonal line. So we're going to be sewing starting at the bottom edge, the bottom corner, and sewing on a diagonal line toward the zipper teeth. So let me just move this so that I can show you with my finger actually. Let me show you with my chalk. So we're going to be stitching this line right here, and if you find it more helpful to draw the line on your zipper, that's fine. It doesn't have to be super neat. I know the zipper teeth are kind of in the way and making things a little bit difficult. Just do the best you can, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be um, inside the, the seam allowance of the finished bag, and again, we're just doing this on one end. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and stitch on those diagonal lines. Okay, 
And you might want to use a stiletto if you have one or a chopstick, something to hold the zipper tape so that your fingers are not getting close to your sewing machine needle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this back. As you can see, the zipper is almost at a 90 degree angle. And you want to make sure that this part, this flap over here, is pushed away from the zipper. So let me show you what that looks like from the back. Okay, I'm going to put a wonder clip just to hold those layers in place. And same thing on the opposite side again. You want to make sure this flap is away from the zipper teeth. Okay, now go ahead and pull out your zipper tab piece and flip to the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to be drawing a line that's a quarter of an inch in from either of the long edges because we're going to be pressing at those lines. So you can either draw those two lines or if you have a pressing tool, this is the hot ruler. It's a flexible piece of ruler with a ruler printed on it. It kind of reminds me of a thin piece of Pell and Peltex interfacing. But the nice thing about this is you can use this piece to instead press the fabric toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. So either drawing and pressing or using the hot ruler, either one will work. And then we're going to be pressing the piece wrong sides together in half and then also bringing the bottom edge up toward the center crease and then same thing for the opposite short end. Okay so after you've pressed that go ahead and refold along all the creases and give it one more press. And then this will enclose all the raw edges and this will create um, a nice finished edge for the bottom of the zipper. Okay, now go ahead and insert the cut end of the zipper in between the zipper tab. So the cut end of the zipper is going to hit that center crease. And then go ahead and refold that fabric. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the entire outer edge of the zipper tab using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters. Now go ahead and take out one of your lining main panels and I'm going to draw a line along the top edge that's three quarters of an inch in from either side. Okay, we're going to be laying the zipper so that it's wrong side against the fabric. So that's super important because normally we're doing things the opposite of that. So again, the right side of the zipper will be face up wrong side of the zipper will be against the fabric. We're going to start with the cut and folded over ends. So again, you want to make sure that little flap is pushed upward. And the beginning of the zipper is where the teeth are, is going to be at that three quarters of an inch line. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and pin along the top edge of the zipper. When you reach the opposite end where that three quarters of an inch line is, we need to veer the zipper slightly toward the center of the lining main panel. The reason for that is the zipper tail will be showing when the bag is finished and it just is a nicer look and easier finish to have this slightly reared off the edge of the, the fabric or toward the center of the fabric, I mean. So we'll be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance so when you get to this opposite end, just keep going with the quarter of an inch till you reach that three quarters of an inch marking. Okay, and I'm sewing with my regular stitch length, which is two and a half millimeters. When you approach that zipper head, stop with the needle down, lift the presser foot up, and then go ahead and zip that zipper head out of the way.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that zipper tape is pulled down slightly and I'm going to pin it in place just so that it's not in the way for this next step. We're going to be adding the lining zipper panel and we're going to place it face down so the right side of the zipper will be against the right side of the lining zipper panel. And I'm going to pin the entire top edge. Okay, we're going to be sewing the entire top edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, make sure that tail is down and out of your way so that when we sew this corner, we're not stitching um, that tail down. Again, this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I feel my zipper head over here, so I'm going to go ahead and just move it out of the way really quick. Okay, now we're going to press the seam toward the lining main panel, so we're going to press the seam down. And we're going to top stitch the area below the zipper using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, make sure that that zipper tail is pushed out of the way and feel free to put a wonder clip to hold it in place. When you're sewing this beginning portion, because the zipper teeth are over here, you may decide to hand crank over just the small portion just to get you past the zipper teeth and then you can sew as normal. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, now we're going to be adding the second lining main panel and the set of steps is the same so we're going to start off by making a mark that's three quarters of an inch in from either of the side edges. And if you'll remember from the very beginning of the pattern after we attached the interfacing we made those center markings on our um, zipper panel and lining main panel pieces. So here's my center marking over here. Let me use some white chalk so that you can see it a little better. I'm going to actually transfer that center marking on the zipper just so that I can get everything lined up evenly when I'm attaching the second half of the zipper to the other lining main panel. Okay, so again we need to make sure that the right side of the zipper is face up. All right, so I'm going to flip the zipper and again I'm going to start by aligning that center marking that I made on the zipper tape. The beginning end of your zipper should be at that three quarters of an inch marking. And then again, just as we did before, we're going to be veering the end of the zipper with the zipper tab down when we reach that last three quarters of an inch marking. Okay, go ahead and change back to your usual stitch length. And we're going to be sewing this pinned edge again using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. the last lining zipper panel face down so right sides together with the right side of the zipper. Again make sure that that end of the zipper is pushed down so I'm going to use a water clip just to hold it out of the way. Okay. 
And again, align those center markings as well. That'll help you pin everything and evenly distribute the fabric. Okay, we're gonna be sewing the entire top edge from one end to the other using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, we're going to press that seam down. And we're going to be top stitching an eighth of an inch away from the zipper. And again, make sure that that tab is pushed out of the way. So I'm just going to pin it up here. And this is the edge that we're going to be top stitching. I'm going to be lengthening my stitch length to three millimeters for this top stitching. Okay, now we're going to be attaching the exterior top panel to the exterior main panel. So to do that, Flip your exterior top panel over so that it's wrong side facing up. And we're going to be drawing a line across the bottom edge that is a quarter of an inch up. Okay, I'm going to press toward the wrong side at that line. And then we're going to place the pressed edge of the fabric so that it's aligned with this top edge of the opening of the zipper pocket. So I'm going to use some wonder clips to hold the fabrics in place. We're going to be sewing the entire outer edge of the exterior top panel using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters. And when you're sewing this portion over here, do your best to sew. You can kind of feel the, the foam interfacing through the, the fabric. Do your best to sew on a diagonal so that you catch all of the layers. Make sure that your pocket fabric is smoothed out out of the way and you'll repeat this same process for the remaining exterior main panel so both pieces will have the exterior top panel fabric attached. Okay so with both pieces attached go ahead and flip to the wrong side of the fabric and we're just going to trim the overhang of the exterior top panel so that it's even with the exterior main panel and you'll do the same thing with both pieces. Okay, now it's time to sew the darts. So if you'll notice on the bottom edges of all the main panel pattern pieces, there's sort of a V cut out. We're going to be pinching these fabrics so that they're right sides together and sewing the dart. And the darts just give the bag um, a three dimensional shape so it's not an entirely flat bag. So I'm gonna flip so that it's wrong side facing up. First, I'm gonna take my finger and kind of smooth this area out before I fold the fabrics. By smoothing it out first, you'll have less chance of puckers in this area. And same thing for the other side. Again, smooth it out with your finger first. 
and then place a wonder clip a little bit higher up just to hold the fabric flat. We're going to be sewing this edge with the dart using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and change back to your usual stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. to do a visual check after you've sewn the darts. The dart should be nice and smooth without extra fabric bunched up. If you do happen to notice some extra fabric bunched up, just rip your seam and sew it again. And don't stress out about it. It happens to me also. I sewed the original prototype and I had fabric bunched up. So not a big deal. It's a really small area. Just rip the seam and then sew it until you get a nice smooth edge. Okay, so I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the fabric. And we're going to be pressing both of the darts to the right. So I'm just going to kind of lift my fabric panel up a little bit and then just press it so that it falls to the right. Same thing with the other one. Okay, so you'll be repeating that dart sewing process and pressing process for both of the exterior main panels. Again, we're pressing all of the darts to the right. And we'll be doing the same thing for the lining darts. So again, sewing the darts in the same manner and pressing all of the darts to the right. All right, so now we're going to start assembling the bag. So grab both of your exterior main panel pieces and we're gonna flip them so that they're right sides together. So I'm just gonna kind of push those darts out so they're not fighting with me. All right, I'm going to start by pinning the top corners, just a couple wonder clips there. And we need to, to line up a few things here. So we've got the exterior top panel. So you wanna just visually check and get those fabrics aligned. Same thing on the other side. Again, you wanna align the exterior top panel fabrics the best you can. And we also need to align the darts. Because we pressed all of the darts to the right, um, they're, the seams are kind of what we call nesting. So they're staggered. So this dart is in this direction and this dart is in this direction and they kind of almost sort of lock in place. And same thing with the other dart to make sure that they're aligned kind of move the fabric to you, till you can't move it anymore so that those seams kind of lock in place. And then finish pinning the rest of the way around. Okay, so we're gonna take the exterior over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and make sure you're sewing at your regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. Okay, so we're going to sew the sides and bottom of the lining as well. So go ahead and bring the fabrics right sides together. The process is the same as before. We're going to start pinning at the top corner. It might be helpful to have the zipper unzipped toward the center so that's out of your way. And we're going to do the same thing with aligning the darts. I'm gonna push that zipper tail toward the inside. Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna sew the lining a little bit differently. Let me just finish pinning the rest of the way around and then I'll explain how we're going to be sewing the lining. So we're gonna start at the top corner using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. As soon as you pass that seam connecting the lining zipper panel to the lining main panel, we're gonna start veering off into a bigger seam allowance. So we're gonna start veering off into a half, half an inch seam allowance. So it's gradual, it's not going to be a jagged, it's gonna be a gradual increase. Sew the rest of the sides and the bottom using a half an inch, and then as you start approaching that seam on the opposite end, start veering back, door, back down toward a quarter of an inch and finish the rest of the seam with a quarter of an inch. What that does is, because this is such a small bag, having a bigger seam allowance for the lining helps it fit more snugly inside the exterior, but you need to start at the same seam allowance so that everything matches up when we sew the top edges of the bag together to finish it. And make sure that zipper pocket fabric is not in your waist so that you don't accidentally sew over it. Okay, we're gonna trim that half inch seam down to about a quarter of an inch and there's no need to measure it. You can just eyeball it. We just want to have it a smaller seam and also be more consistent with the top edge of the bag where we sewed a quarter of an inch. Okay, go ahead and put your main panels to the side for now. And in the pattern, there's tabs that are on the exterior along the outer top edge of the bag. I have in the pattern instructions two different um, options if you're using quilting cotton or if you're using cork or leather or another material that you can cut raw. So I'm gonna show you how to do both. So if you're using quilting cotton, pull out two of your tab pieces place them right sides together. I actually went ahead and cut out my paper pattern piece along the dashed line, and I'm going to transfer that to the wrong side of one of the tabs. I found this really helpful to have this because it creates a stitching line for you, and because there's so many different changes in pivoting and different edges on this particular piece, it's helpful to have the seam allowance actually drawn on there. So we're actually gonna be stitching directly on top of the line so it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to leave along this straight edge, along the top edge. Make sure you leave a little bit of room from where you need to pivot. But I'm gonna leave an opening and this is where we're gonna turn the fabric piece right side out. Again, use that trick that I talked about earlier um, with the zipper pocket if you don't Feel like you're going to be ending up directly in the corner where the lines meet, decrease your stitch length so that you can get a more accurate sew. Okay, clip the corners, so that just means cutting on a diagonal where the corners are. Okay, and then we're gonna be turning this right side out and giving it a press.
I'm going to use my precision turning tool to gently poke out the corners. Okay, so we're going to press this and we're also going to press the opening toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. Okay, go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch just the top edge and the bottom edge an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. We're going to leave the short ends unsewn for now. So let me show you what to do if you're using cork, leather, or another material which you can cut and leave raw. So I'm using black cork fabric for my bag. And I already cut out two pieces when I was going through the cutting instructions. I'm going to use some fabric glue. I'm using Fonz and Porter glue. And I'm just going to glue on the wrong side of the fabric all the way around the perimeter. And I'm going to stick it, I have the wrong side of the cork fabric face up. I'm going to stick it wrong sides together with another piece of the same color of cork. Same thing for the other piece. And then allow these pieces to dry for a little bit. We're going to be doing the same method for top stitching that we did with the cotton fabric. Again, we're just gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric along the top and the bottom edge. We're not gonna be sewing the short edge at all. And then after you've completed the top stitching, you can go ahead and cut the piece out so that both layers are matching. Okay, make sure that your exterior is turned right side facing out and those tabs are going to be attached with either Chicago screws or rivets. So I'm going to be attaching rivets to mine. As you can see, I've already attached the tab to the left hand side of the bag and I'm going to show you how to attach the tab to the opposite side of the bag. Okay so to start with take your tab and we're going to be drawing a vertical line that's halfway down the tab so it's going to be two inches in and then we're also going to be drawing a line that's one and three quarters of an inch down from the top edge of the bag and we're going to do that on the other side as well so that we can get the tab lined up. Okay, so we're going to place the center marking on the tab directly on top of the seam. And then you want to make sure the top edge of the tab is lined up with that one and three quarters of an inch marking. And just remember that the, the tab comes down a little bit. So you want the top straight edge. That's the edge that you want to be aligned. So I'm using a tabletop rivet press. If you have a handheld press, you can use that instead or a different type of press or punch. Uh, one more thing that I forgot to do, we're also going to be marking a half inch in from both of the side edges and you want that marking to be centered. That's where the rivets are going to be installed at. I'm going to use a different color on mine just to make sure I don't <laughs> mistakenly attach the rivet to the wrong position. Okay, there we go. Okay, so like I mentioned, make sure that the center marking on the tab is aligned with the seam. The top straight edge is going to be aligned with that marking and do your best. I know the exterior is already sewn together. Do your best to hold it in place in the correct positioning so that you can get it under the, the rivet press. Okay, so I'm gonna use a hole punch to punch a hole where I'll be installing the rivet. And for now, just to hold the layers in place, I'm gonna go ahead and push my caps through both layers of fabric just to hold everything while I make the second hole.
Okay, so I'm going to make the second hole and then I'm going to install the caps. Okay, so again, I'm going to push my rivet caps through the fabric. And I'm going to switch out to my rivet dies. And I'm going to secure those rivets in place. Okay, so you'll repeat that process for the second tab. And then one more thing we need to do to finish the tabs off is we need to top stitch the short ends. So we're just going to be sewing an eighth of an inch away from the short end on the front and the back of the bag. Okay, now we're going to make the adjustable strap. So pull out your strap fabric piece and flip so that the wrong side is facing up. Just from one short end, we're going to be measuring in by a half an inch. And we're going to be pressing toward the wrong side at that marking. So again, we're only doing this for one short end. The other short end, just leave raw as is. Okay, so we're going to be pressing the fabrics wrong sides together in half. and you'll be pressing the entire length of the strap and then go ahead and open the fabric out, bring the lower edge in toward the center crease and press. Go ahead and refold the fabric and give it one more press. Okay, we're going to be taking this strap over to the sewing machine. We're going to top stitch both of the long edges only using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters. you'll finish top stitching the entire length of the strap and then you'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, now pull out your strap tab and fold it right sides together in half and I'm just going to pin the side that's opposite the fold. We're going to be sewing this pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, make sure you have your stitch length changed back to your regular stitch length. Okay, now we're going to turn this piece right side out. I'm using the fast turn tool, but of course you can use the turning tool of your choice. Okay, so go ahead and align that seam down the center on one side and give it a press. We're going to top stitch both of the finished long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, now we're going to be attaching the strap tab to the bag. So you can attach it to either the left or the right hand side of the bag, whichever you prefer. I'm going to be attaching mine to the left hand side of the bag and we're going to be attaching the strap tab to the rectangle. So go ahead and fold the
the strap tab in half so that the raw edges are aligned. And I'm going to center that strap tab on the side seam. We're going to be stitching this in place using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to attach the slider on the end of the strap with the raw edges. So go ahead and bring the strap over and under the metal bar in the middle of the slider. And now we're going to attach that raw edge of the strap. Again, it's going to be centered on the right-hand side of the bag, and the right side of the slider is going to be facing the bag. So it should look like this. Okay, again, we're going to attach this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now we're going to bring the opposite end of the strap. Again, make sure it's not twisted. We're going to bring it through the rectangle on the opposite side. And then I'm giving myself a little bit of room where that metal rectangle is. I'm going to go ahead and bring it to the underside of the metal slider. And let me hold it up so you can see it from this end. And it's going to go over and under the middle bar and it's going to come out the opposite end. So we're going to be stitching. Let me bring this strap up so that you can see where everything is coming from. So I'm just going to fold this part. This is the part that we just brought underneath that metal slider. I'm going to fold it down by about two inches and then we're going to be stitching the finished edge of the strap an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Okay, leave the exterior right side facing out, leave the lining wrong side facing out. Let's go ahead and unzip all of the zippers. And I'm going to slide the exterior inside the lining, so at this time you can decide which side of the bag you'd like the zipper pocket to be in. If you'd like to be the zipper pocket and the lining to be on the opposite side as the one in the front, just go ahead and take note of that and make sure your exterior is inserted in that orientation. And we also need to make sure that the strap is pushed down to the inside in between the two layers. Okay, we're going to be aligning the side seams of the exterior and the lining, so you can go ahead and take your fingers and push those seams open. And then we're also going to be pinning the entire top edge of the bag right sides together. And you can use those center markings that we made at the very beginning of the pattern to align the exterior and the lining fabrics. Okay, go ahead and pin around the entire outer edge, and then we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the top edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, make sure you have your stitch length changed back to your usual, and mine's two and a half millimeters. Okay, this is optional, but you can go ahead, if you wish, to trim back the foam by about an eighth of an inch, and this will just help create a more crisp top edge of the bag when we do the top stitching. 
And after you've done that, go ahead and reach in to the zipper pocket. And actually, I'm going to reach through my lining, I think. Yeah, I'll reach through my lining zipper pocket and pull everything right side out. I'm going to slide the lining inside the exterior so that the fabrics are wrong sides together. And you want to press the top edge of your bag over the end of your iron. So I'm just going to finger press mine since I don't have um, my ironing board handy for the videos. And I'm going to place some wonder clips along the top edge. After you've done that, we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and top stitch the top edge using a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance, and that's just basically a hair less than a quarter of an inch seam. Okay, and I pushed my strap through the machine so that I can continuously top stitch the top edge of the bag. And I've also lengthened my stitch length to three millimeters, and as you're sewing, just make sure that the zippers push down out of your way. Okay, all that we have left to do is close the openings in the zipper pocket. So to do that, go ahead and pull the zipper pocket fabric out and just finger fold the fabric toward the inside by a quarter of an inch. Okay, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch the opening closed using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You'll repeat the same process for the zipper pocket that's in the exterior and then your bag's all finished so give it a good press. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished bag. Be sure to post a photo of your finished project in my Facebook group. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.